to your first comer, Rusana. Nice to have you. Yes, hello. <laughs> Wait. Hello. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, hello. Should we put the main image? Mm, yes, I could do that. Do you want me to do presentation mode? Do that. Can you see it? Yes. yes. Just uh, use voice because I cannot see anything else now that I'm in school. Ah, yes. Here. Yes. Uh, so good. Our oceans. Look how calm and peaceful they are. Also, make sure you you get people. You let people because yes, uh, yeah, uh, I won't be on the set. No worries. So <clears throat> let's wait a few more minutes to see, <clears throat> and then we can dive in. <laughs> As we have Rosanna joining already, nice on time. I haven't spoke to you before. How did you came here? Do, do you know Rosanna? Mm, yeah, I think I just started following system innovation on LinkedIn like a year ago. And um, I've been at one event with the Amsterdam Hub, which was a few weeks ago with the Lego series game where I met Hannah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm in Enschede, studying now in exchange, like in also in Netherlands. So I would like to, I'm studying environmental engineering and would like to uh, learn more about system change. And so, yes. Welcome. Thanks. Interesting. Okay, so we wait uh, one or two more minutes and then we can begin. Hey, Christian, nice to see you again. Haven't seen you in a while. Hello, good afternoon. It's nice to meet you too, <laughs> again. Nice to see you, for those that just joined. We are used to keeping the Swiss sharp <laughs> stats in the past, but Kevin, I think we can allow for one more minute. The Dutch style. Yes, uh, for sure. A bit more relaxed. <laughs> the academic quarter. We don't do that anymore, universities, right? The academic quarter. There was a was a thing that. And yeah, I've never actually understood the uh, what they were what they meant by it because it was like. Uh, Actually, the academic quarter where I studied, it translated into you you had to swap cards for attendance and you had this window like before 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after the lecture start. So I took that as you are allowed to be 15 minutes late. <laughs> and uh... So we'll give it one more minute and then we begin. In the spirit okay. of uh, punctuality and also uh, to make sure that our guests are not bored. <laughs> and also to leave Waiting. some time for the Q&A at the end, so yes. if people have questions, something they want to say. I think it's good, so we'll that. keep letting people in, but I think we can begin. It's now 5.02, so welcome everyone. Today, uh, the workshop that we are hosting together with uh, Kevin, Richard and Diana is about multi-ocean strategy framework. So this is a collaborative project which started now seven or eight months ago. We've been working on that for a long time uh, with the team and um, we're excited to show you um, the framework as is right now and uh, also put it to test to see in the um, systems thinking community uh, how does it uh, resonate and um, what is the experience uh, that we can uh, create together. So thanks again for joining and with that, we can move to the um, first slide just for housekeeping to show what we plan to do today. 
and what the agenda would look like. So Diana, if you can uh, click. Maybe before that, do you want to say anything, Justin? Do you want to? Ah, yes, uh, our yeah. host. <laughs> yes, thank you, yeah, very shortly. Yeah, we're just very um, happy to welcome you. Um, as a systems innovation network, we all always like to welcome people who are working in the same field and uh, uh, really love your approach. Um, very creative uh, outcome strategic design agency. Um, and yeah, I love the way that you're using artwork and metaphors to approach complex challenges because they are sometimes very abstract for, uh, for people and for us. So um, yeah, I really love to see your approach and how you're working on it. But I see we have a lot of it on the on the schedule. So um, yeah, let's just get started and I'll give you uh, the word again. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Justin. So the agenda is really simple. Uh, we will try to mix and match the framework with also a, a use case and an activity uh, to make sure that uh, everyone participates and uh, the community is engaged. And for the today's discussion, um, considering the complexity um, in the system innovation world, we chose Tesla as a use case to illustrate some of their um, efforts and also the, the challenge that they face in this new space of uh, electric vehicles. And what does it mean to think about it from a, a systemic perspective? Thanks, Diana. So a brief high overview of what our multi-ocean strategy framework is about. And by the way, as we speak, we plan to launch a website where all this information will be made publicly available. So please bear with us. And if you'd like to connect, we share our details at the end of the presentation. So we will let you know when the site is available and you can check it out. Uh, <clears throat> so back to the multi-ocean strategy framework. So this is um, really an exciting tool for us because we consider uh, combining multiple perspectives and using uh, design thinking, system thinking and creative approaches to, to create actually a gamified tool that can help you uh, discover deep and new insights to strengthen your research on one side, but also widen the range of possibilities for innovation, because we feel that by experimenting with multiple scenarios, uh, practitioners are able to manage risk and also be well more well prepared to handle all the disruptions and the uncertainties. Uh, last but not least, for us, it was very important to embed in the tool and the framework itself aspects of collaboration because we know for experience um, working on many pro many complex projects together that only by uh, collaborating and sharing and having a uh, one place where we can align and exchange ideas we can speed up the execution and making sure that we actually go in the right direction and of course we made this gamified approach because we really want to have fun exploring the unknown we don't want to feel overwhelmed and lost in the uh, abyss and the deep waters of uh, uh, the complexity and this actually what inspired us to put it in the context of the oceans as we move along uh, uh, the whole team will share more information about the components but before we get there some of the a uh, little bit on the background of how we approach this collaborative project and what are the three key important elements for us in terms of uh, touch points so as I say, uh, we spend a lot of time thinking and uh, working in the unknown, but for us, the most effective and um, efficient way to align um, and create this shared language is to use a metaphor. So the ocean uh, <clears throat> can be a metaphor for many things, and we'll be really curious to hear what you had in mind, and we then would reveal what it, what it is for us, but it was a really powerful way uh, to communicate and make sure that we are on the same page, no matter where we come in and uh, how we approach the problem. Second, the complexity. We feel that the power of, uh, of um, overcoming and not feeling um, uh, suboptimal in our solutions uh, is the power of a relationship and how we can um, how we can um, use these dynamic blueprints that unite us and explore the intricate links sometimes explicit sometimes inexplicit uh, to help us understand also the unintended consequences which in which in the world of system innovation is something that i feel quite passionate about and lastly uh, on the execution side 
uh, we feel that through the uh, power of innovation and thinking about systemic change, mapping value and impact, which is the two most important components of our framework, we can make um, the innovation a bit more purposeful and sustainable, uh, hopefully leading to positive uh, outcomes. To think about how everything ties together, we created this interesting image that shows the multiple oceans that we um, we consider in our framework. So we are not limited to one, we are not even limited to two, but we have five for very good reasons. Just to briefly mention their names. So we have a, a red ocean, which is about establish a marketplace and establish uh, uh, companies and businesses. We also have a gray ocean, which is a local ocean, quite uh, specific and quite uh, narrow in terms of reach and uh, capabilities. Also, of course, we couldn't uh, stay away from the blue ocean, which is a known metaphor for a highly innovative space. But in addition to that, we added two new oceans, which we think are quite relevant in the current dynamics where we sit. Uh, one is the yellow ocean, uh, <clears throat> which uh, characterizes and represents all these blitzscaling and fast growing companies uh, known as platforms. And last but not least is the green ocean, the sustainable uh, one, where uh, many companies prioritize uh, purpose over profit. And we see a lot of initiatives also with the sustainable goals that put companies in that domain. So that's the outer layer. Uh, <clears throat> then in our framework, we also have actors because these oceans can only uh, become real and can only be meaningful if we are able to actually embody the companies that play in them, but through a specific characteristic related to their behavior. And these are our actors. And last but not least, in the middle of what unites uh, and gives a little bit of a color and flavor to um, all of this happening here are the so-called monsters. And they, for some sim simple reason, just to remember what are those, they represent um, every aspect of risk, uncertainty and challenges that companies face as they move from one ocean to another. And uh, to get us started so that it's not a monologue, but everyone participates, we thought that the first question we'd like to pose also as a warm up exercise is to ask you from your experiences, what do you associate the uh, ocean as a mod metaphor uh, also to consider in the context of system thinking? And we would like to give for this exercise five minutes um, to gather as many ideas as possible. <clears throat> So I'm going to put the timer on. Does anyone want music? Ah, uh, yeah, I think it would be nice. Just okay, share the link on the, the chat so everyone can join. Yeah, Did you please do. Join? So what comes to mind when you think about the ocean as a metaphor? What do you associate it with? Yeah, we hear things. And I think every time we think of the ocean, we, we might get, you know, steady, you the usual metaphors, but sometimes I feel like they kind of happen in the moment we establish a new relationship to to what it means to navigate an ocean because now you know like even i think uh, of the ocean and the systems thinking as a you no know, as the routes themselves i didn't think about it as uh like it feels like there's a, a human extension right that down for me for me personally, I sometimes associate the ocean with the metaphor, uh, with the uh, this ability and uh, uh, idea of the awakening to take actions because you can't take forever being in an ocean. Uh, I don't think you have the luxury. Yeah, I like uh, this comment. Hard to escape, for sure. There are not there are not many easy way out. <laughs> unless you bump into an island. I mean, ever since we left the water as we evolved, you know, as a species, it's been very difficult to go back in. It's not friendly to us anymore. Mm 
Yeah, I've seen this a couple of times. It's dynamic, it's tur turbulent. It's, uh... And I also think that there are many layers of relationship because the uh, the life of the ocean is not only uh, in the ocean itself, but also outside. So I, I perceive on the surface in the air, but deep in the water. So we have in a way multi multi layers of this relationship that matter, which create uh, this powerful idea of the ecosystem. And I mean, uh, you know, like uh, I saw one of the, the sticky notes was about this differently uh, depths represent different stages of process or different levels of risk. But I'm also thinking about the life itself, how it's changing from one level to another. The deeper you go, the odder the creatures seem to look, you know, the more unknown spaces uh, there are. And sometimes they don't just abide to the same rules. We have one extra minute. Yeah, uh, I was thinking like they definitely never, you know, you can't never wander into the ocean being like, oh, yes, I'll I'll get to the, the other side uh, without a plan, without being properly prepared. It's, uh, it's such a, a serious endeavor. I'm going to make a comment. So last time when we uh, did the icebreaker in our initial first workshop to, to present this framework, we chose instead of this uh, yellow wavy ocean, we chose a blue one. And I can tell you that the, the metaphors are slightly different. So the color code seems to influence how people think of the ocean. You know, like I remember there was this vastness and how how wide, how big, and how how just you know, but in in this one, you know, I see the the tendencies to talk about the dynamic and the uh, the turbulent space and the differences. So I I really like this. Just I wanted to point out. Right. So I think we have quite a an interesting mix here. Um, yes. So let's move to the next one. So I'm going to go into presentation mode for you, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. So we explain. Yeah. So... Yep. There we go. So, so as you just saw, um, we have this idea of um, multiple oceans, and this is clearly a departure from the original uh, pro perhaps you already heard of the blue ocean strategy, and this for us it's uh, it's clearly a departure from from the notion of red and blue, uh, because the blue ocean is uh, some kind of um, a not real space, uh, and it's limiting in uh, in the sense that it's uh, it's just a, a dichotomy between uh, an existing state and a future better one. And what we wanted to um, to to do with with our framework is to um, enable uh, more opportunities to think differently and to include more di diversity in terms of um, value spaces and um, also the type of constraints and the type of um, of um, characteristics you can find within different markets. So, yeah. So basically, we we have with these different value spaces, these different oceans, some um, constraints, some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so the reds, um, you have stability, but you can also 
because of that uh, stagnate. And this is often what triggers the, the necessity to find the so-called blue ocean. The blue ocean um, uh, enables you to be the first to innovate, but you can easily get lost within the blue ocean because it's fast and, and deep. Uh, the yellow is the, the blitz scale um, and the potential success that goes with, with it, but it's also a dangerous place and you can easily sink uh, within this uh, yellow ocean. And the green one, um, it's about sustainability and therefore you can make impact there, but you can also feel stuck. Um, and, and the local, the gray ocean, uh, you will find um, the trust because you, you have like uh, short uh, relationships within a local space, uh, but it's also easy to get rejected, especially if you are a newcomer in this kind of um, ocean. So what we want to show with those, those oceans is that the companies or organizations are not uh, just in one ocean, but they operate in, in multiple oceans at the same time, but they can also uh, change uh, oceans from time to time. And we have some dynamic uh, movements between oceans. Um, and this will de clearly depends on the kind of transformations or business models that the organization will, will um, uh, deploy. So for our case study, for our case today, uh, it's uh, we, we've taken Tesla as um, as an example, and uh, here what we want to show is that Tesla is already operating in different uh, oceans uh, because of their different uh, business models. Uh, so for the electric cars, we have uh, the red and the yellow. So uh, it's already an increasing uh, competition competitive space. Uh, but there's also space, still space for, for growth, especially in the, the scaling. Uh, that's the reason for the, the yellow. <clears throat> they have also um, a business model related, uh, relating to solar energy. Uh, and this is where they operate in the, in the green ocean. Um, they also are in the process of still developing the full self-driving uh, feature, and this will potentially enable a new kind of um, business model. Uh, this is why they, it's in, still in the blue, because it's not well uh, yet well uh, defined and uh, well shaped. And for the local ocean, they are developing their charging station uh, and their network. And this can only happen on the local uh, space although they are doing that um, worldwide. Um, and that's the reason for, for this last one. Yeah, and what we are, want to, to, to show is that they, they all have the potential to move um, th with time uh, from these uh, oceans to potentially um, a red one where competition is uh, increasing because things don't stay in one place and things evolve over time. I don't know, Diana, if you want to add something on the last one. Um, I mean, we will continue with the, the use case, but actually I want to show first this, uh, you know, kind of to understand a bit more on the power mm -hmm. of the metaphor and kind of how we work with it. Uh, so it's, it's worth mentioning that how typical uh, segmentations when it comes to like dividing companies, uh, they actually fail to convey meaning. So let's say that when working with a systems approach, dividing companies into small to size doesn't really reveal much about the nature and the strategy. But we also might not get much uh, insight, even if we consider, let's say, their sector or specialty or geographic location. So we needed a blend that was working uh, with multiple components compatible with context specific characteristics uh, if you needed to add on. So that's how we came up with these five archetypes for players navigating the oceans. They are defined by certain behaviors and identities that they are enacting at sea, portraying different attitudes to complexity, really. So we have the protector, for example, uh, determining control, 
uh, with two main uh, capabilities to secure the status quo and regulate the market. We also get buyers who are determining the flow and uh, their main attributes is to offer multiple products, buy, build platforms. Uh, we also have seekers always looking for opportunities, uh, discovering unmet needs, identifying new opportunities. Uh, we also have the maverick thinking about disruption and being disruptive by nature, uh, seeking to break the status quo and act in unexpected ways. Uh, and lastly, we have the maker, which is all about creation. It's about executing with impact, creating uh, the market. And uh, the uh, third category of elements that we have are the monsters. So monsters are also quite special and we'll be, or we'll find out in a bit why. So they are a representation of those threatening and energy draining encounters that, uh, you know, lead to, uh, we lead our businesses into. Uh, if we're not aware or careful enough, uh, we may fall prey to these self-compromising decisions. So our metaphor for fear is the Leviathan, uh, a sea monster that lives in shallow waters and it, it really has the special property of making your fears come through. And the, the only response sometimes we develop as flight or fight response. Uh, then we have obsession, which we correlated with Moby Dick. So we, we remember the, the tale of uh, hunting it and never really uh, capturing it. So it, it triggers this uh, false sense that it's within reach. But because of this unpredictable behavior comes out of an obsession, we can never really catch it. Then we have this seduction as the mermaid, which is uh, always an alluring, uh, let's say a product or something that uh, seems in, in, inoffensive uh, and playful at the beginning, but really conceals serious risks, serious risks. Uh, and because it, uh, because it really allures players to deviate and lose track of their weight. And lastly, we have this really powerful one, which is greed uh, that we portray as the Kraken, which can sim sink even the, the, the biggest ships uh, navigating around because it preys on those who try to gain more than they can handle. And you can never really fight greed uh, uh, head on. It takes a really coordinated team effort so players, uh, a player can escape. And, you know, to move into the, the use case, uh, we have Tesla as a differentiator. And we thought that based on our uh, current player behaviors and our metaphor, they fit quite well into this uh, maverick uh, bucket. They are about breaking the status quo in an unexpected way. They disrupt the market, take big risks and look into look for new connections and relationships to create these new norms. But because uh, we, we had a bit of a conversation about the uh, the monsters, and actually we will have in a bit, is the activity today. We want to show you how we translated this multi-ocean presence and guided by our insight on monsters, we actually managed to catch on those risks and possibly self-compromising decisions. So in their report, Tesla highlights that their approach is really, you know, how did we get a relentless focus on speed of execution? which, you know, leveraging innovation, speed of execution and efficient processes are as competitive advantage to create new markets and disrupt existing ones is a really powerful uh, and aggressive approach. But I think, you know, that brings consequences. So, you know, monsters are actually being awakened inside and around Tesla that we thought it would be great if we could map uh, and, uh, you know, look at what other potential monsters besides the, the ones we identified uh, we can find. So get out of the presentation mode and uh, let's do another fun exercise. Talking about the monsters in the closet of Teslas. So the question um, that we want to pose to you is uh, to ask what are the monsters in these categories? Do you think um, the aggressive strategy of Tesla in the last few years uh, is triggering? And here we have given some examples to illustrate of what uh, we think is going on. So I'll begin first with the seduction, the mermaid. We think that this high, the promise on the high ROI, return on investment, 
is uh, it's uh, uh, not necessarily going in their favor, and it is putting a lot of um, expectation and also pressure, especially for the future and what the Tesla can uh, can provide and can the Tesla sustain this uh, super uh, exponential and high growth that uh, they were able to get so far. If we think about the obsession, um, this relentless focus on the speed of execution, you may wonder how how good that is, and isn't that actually uh, a bit of a uh, an obsession in a way that um, may stop them of um, uh, perhaps considering and paying more attention to certain aspects of quality um, and responsiveness to uh, to customer needs. So we don't know, but just an idea that. Uh, too much of a, too much of a, uh, anything is not necessarily a good thing in the long run. Especially when you have to maintain really high stakes. So you know we thought you know on the fear level that uh, their relentless pursuit actually they, they they might just feel pushed to innovate beyond their actual capacity at some point and. Uh, not making the right decisions. And we are hoping that um, you just can use your general knowledge about Tesla and what uh, you know uh, to help us fill this map. So even if you are not quite uh, sure um, about the accurateness of your ideas, please contribute because we none of us are experts on Tesla either, but we try to the best of our ability to um, analyze what's going on. So just be brave. There are no wrong answers. You know, I so, saw uh, one of the, the sticky notes about Elon, and I thought Elon Musk is <laughs> indeed an impersonation of the. I think one sticky note on its own would have been enough. <laughs> he definitely obsessed. There is no doubt there. But I like this, uh, this touch on the a... greed. <laughs> I think it's in both, right? Greed and obsession. Because you want more success, right? Well, uh, to give him some credit, uh, almost no one had taken Tesla in the early days seriously because the people thought that there is no room uh, in the established um, auto manufacturing market for a new entry and certainly not new entry in the electric vehicle space. So uh, all the big names um, dismissed them, but nevertheless, Tesla is uh, what Tesla is today, uh, and um, the success cannot should not be undermined. <clears throat> yeah, there is a fear of becoming old. Indeed, they are more than ten years uh, now in service, right, Kevin, or less, somewhere there, I think. Yes. Yeah, they are definitely not new players anymore. Yeah, it's hard to, to stay young as you're getting old. Maybe we can give uh, Diana an extra minute because I think now ideas yeah. are coming, so it's worth uh, waiting a little to see. Mm, of course. Oh, yes, Tesla decided to take over every means of transport. I think this. Uh... Oh yeah, definitely the budget friendly EVs. I mean, they're known for luxury cars. So as soon as we get cheaper and 
possibly even better. I think they will have to pivot or do something about it. And I think their relentless pursuit now, their obsession is actually quite justified. Pursuing this monster feels, uh, I don't know, less uh, less compromising than if they had to go for fear. All right. So in a bit we'll be done so what we want to do here is actually we're going to do a bit of voting if you want to have some fun with us so we pick on a monster and uh, that will be the monster we choose to take on to the next scene catch on i'm going to give each three votes and a minute. So uh, user democratic rights well. So just to uh, make sure um, we are all on the same page, you want us to uh, vote on the, vo the monster so that we can find which is the dominant monster that uh, we're taking uh, further? Yes, in the so just one monster. I yes. think it would be good if we just take our, our favorite monster, <laughs> the, the monster that we think it's the most uh, stressing one. So can Let's we vote? Guess. Ah, yes. Yes. No. Mm -hmm. I don't like the fact that you now can see how I will vote. It's it's a bit. Yeah, everyone has to close their eyes. <laughs> Should I give some more time? I see people are uh, still voting. So I'm going to give a couple more seconds. Hmm. It's not easy to make a decision, right? No. It's, I mean, the most we could do if we had. Uh, a lot more time we could have you know prioritized maybe choose one each and then see what we can do with them and i think that's kind of the power of the the framework is that you can choose multiple monsters and uh see them as appearing at different touch points and uh depending on the the journey that you're trying to map mm, 17 seconds i can't wait i want to see Okay, so let's see the results. Okay, so we have the biggest was obsess uh, over obsession. disrupting existing yes. sim. Yes, so it's obsession is our monster. Okay, let's let's take our our monster to to the next next space. Then Kevin, you can take over yes. here we'll have a, another exercise here but this one will be actually really fun so yes so the idea here is to uh is to think in terms of uh adjacent spaces so we already uh played a bit with the with the tool so we proposed some ideas here but just to explain so adjacent spaces uh can mean in this case uh other industries that could be uh, close to what uh, Tesla is doing um, in terms of uh, business models, as we saw in the during the the presentation of the case. So you can find in the map here um, some of them, like the charging stations, um, solar uh, solar energy, and stuff like that. And using the hexagons, uh, the idea is to to think about what could be adjacent to that. So 
for instance, we did uh, added um, road infrastructure in between the electric vehicles. And uh, for instance, we added another one, uh, the electric public transport and the delivery services. So they are all close together because it's about transporting stuff. Uh, then you have the road infrastructure itself as a adjacent space. So the the goal here is to find uh, other adjacent spaces. So here it's really about the um, the transportation, but you also have uh, things around uh, energy and also regulations. So and you yeah. can add, you know, things we haven't really thought about. But I think it'd yes. be nice to put them in relation with the obsession. Like where else? Can there be disrupted here? What other industries are, uh, are 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 kind of eager to be disrupted? Maybe I mean uh, unwillingly, but yeah. So, so that is let's... to take one of the the black uh, hexagons and just write down your your idea of what could be an agile space. And if you're brave enough, you can get a, a give it a, a color code that fits our yes. uh, palette of the oceans. But we'll do that in a bit, so you don't have to worry about it. Just uh, tell us what you feel like uh, will be an interesting addition. Okay, I'm gonna music. Forgot the music. No, we have music. It's it's working. I love this one, playing through our card cards. This should be the next stage. If only Elon can figure out the object teleportation, I think uh, we won't see any more Teslas out there. He will put all his energy into it. That would be fun. I mean, I'm not asking much. I don't think it's about human teleportation, but some objects.
coupling cars together. What would that be? Who is that? I saw a note. Um, coupling cars together. Oh, yeah, that was me. That was a ah. <laughs> um, yeah, idea I had already actually. Um, to make like have cars drive on the highway, but make them like a train through like using their shared directions um, and to bring them together and uh, save energy in that, in that way. Yeah, but this is uh, this is a cool idea. I actually like it a lot. I, uh, I'd you like somebody trains? to tow me. No, you, <laughs> you tow to somebody else if it's heading in your direction and you don't waste energy. Yeah, maybe. Different conception of traffic. I made an idea, yeah. Put my ID in the chat. Yeah. This is a drawing of it. Nice. <laughs> nice. I um, since we are running a little late uh, behind the schedule, we have to make an executive decision. What do we want to do? Because we still want to keep five minutes for Q and A's and we had two more exercises to do. So Diana and Kevin help me here. What should we do out of the two? So putting the, putting the exercise. Um, adjacent spaces yeah. into the oceans. So since now they're kind of black, they're not uh, having a, they're not attuned to the color code. We can take these adjacent spaces and let the participants to decide on which uh, you know, part of the framework they would fit. I think we could do this, you know, short exercise. Let's give it three minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yes, and we can help as well because so I think it would be interesting think, to, uh, to make that. Everyone complaint. can take the idea, put it into the uh, in the framework model, but then decide in which ocean do you think it belongs. <clears throat> Yeah, and you can uh, color it. You don't have to like keep it black once it's been turned. I think it's uh, it's nice yeah. to see. Maybe do a copy paste if you can. So we keep. Yeah, the... it would be better if you could do a copy paste. But you know, however, it's easier. Yeah. You can just pr press Control D and it duplicates it. So so simple. I'll be very bold and put this here. <laughs> the Starship delivery should be on the local, a local solution, because the planet is a local space. <laughs> yeah. A lot of stuff in the in the green. Have we transferred everything or are we missing? Oh, 
Okay. So does every oh the flame trokers definitely should be a blitz scale. I I want these to be in the blitz scale. If we don't have them on the streets, there's no point in uh having them at all. But that's personal opinion. You may change. Okay. So kind of this is how we would be able to to, to map these adjacent spaces and kind of give them a bit of a, a visual uh, aid to us. So, you know, our plan was to actually bring all of the, you know, the monsters and the players, but because we don't have time, we are not able to map all of these uh, relationships together. But I think, you know, for, for the sake of this presentation uh, and workshop, it, it would just be interesting to see that we can actually visualize pretty complex things and, you know, begin to actually look at the fact that uh, these properties that we highlight, for example, in the, the, the yellow ocean, we have this disruptive impact on one side, but then we're also having this. Uh, oh, you blocked it already? High risk. High risk. Oh, high risk. Yes. So and, and, and this actually, you know, tells us the story of in between which lanes we're actually uh, operating. All of these ideas are being uh, are not just being loosely thrown out into the world, but they make sense in a in a specific context. Of course, we can, you know, handle and reshuffle some, you know, influence, uh, maybe, you know, part of multiple oceans at the same time. But, you know, that comes with uh, with practice as uh, and depending on the challenge that we want to to uh, handle. So, you know, here, just one last thing, I think uh, this is an example, a very simple example of how we would have done it to map also the players you know, for example, Toyota, because since they, they want to partner, they're partnering with uh, Tesla. Uh, and, you know, what would happen if, uh, let's say, there's a the, the, there's a connection between Tesla and uh, Apple cars who are allegedly uh, coming without a wheel and pedals. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's about how would they be able to work together uh, to make a difference, maybe instead of just seeing them as competition and think about possible solutions around that. And uh, kind of the same applies on, on top. What would be to for this innovator to partner with protectors like uh, a government and uh, shape the the urban infrastructure to to enable the self driving combination in public transit. So you know the the ability to interpret and read this confers you uh, this back and forth freedom to to use the metaphor when you have a blind spot and use the actual name when you need to use it. And the more you learn, the more you move through it, you're able to tell uh, multiple stories. Yeah. So now, I think since we, there's, uh, this is what we had prepared we for the them. workshop. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, and we would like to open uh, the floor for questions, comments, Anything anyone would like to share? And we also had prepared a short feedback form <clears throat> for you to fill and give us some uh, anonymous feedback if you don't want to talk of uh, how was the experience, the content, and etc. And maybe uh, also share if you have a current challenge where you feel this methodology would be applicable. And uh, the last question we were wondering. Does uh, this uh, framework inspire you to uh, consider new actors and new monsters that uh, we may not have thought of? And this would be cool to see because we take feedback seriously and uh, we need that to take uh, the project forward and keep working on it. So, yeah, I can stop sharing screen so I don't put people on the spot when they give feedback. Yeah, in the meantime, if anyone wants to unmute and ask any question or any remarks, feel free yes, to. Yes, I have a question. Um, so do you think then that those monsters are in every uh, every ocean? So both local, established, split, sustainable and innovative. And how come you chose only monsters to be in all those systems and not like heroes, like the positive ones? Rose, 
So maybe I can begin. Uh, for us, the heroes are actually the players, and uh, this is our antidote to the monsters. And we had selected certain superpowers of the heroes, which we think uh, uh, counterbalance and put this equation of, uh, uh, sorry, creates a little bit of an equilibrium and balance in the in the oceans. So we have and not also, uh, forgot the heroes. So heroes are there, but we just call them players. We were a bit more humble. <laughs> There's well, one thing I wanted to add, though, as a hero, would have been nice to have a rescuer, you know, someone who is a hero at sea, uh, who's actually, you know, rescuing the others. But then I thought about the business landscape and it felt a bit difficult to map it on an actual, I mean, we can look at different organizations, but I, I, I don't know if that was a steady archetype we could use. What do you think? Yeah, just to maybe to answer. Because there were two questions, if I understood well. So then, I t tell me if it's wrong. What what you asked for is, is the monster are are the monsters in every oceans, right? Yes. First, that and was the first second, question. Yes. And the second was, uh, how did we choose which players or which uh, heroes, right? But that was the, the the second question. No, the second question was why weren't there heroes to battle ah, the monsters? Okay. 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 So uh, okay, I did. I missed the, the last one. Okay, sorry. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if we answered to the, the, the monsters. No, um, I only answered the second, uh, the okay. heroes. So maybe if you want to talk about the monsters yeah. and how they reside in the ocean, because visually we couldn't put them everywhere, so we had to put them yes. in the center. Yeah. <clears throat> so they, they, they are not bounded to uh, any ocean uh, per se, because they are like um, they are a reflection of what the players are doing. Basically, so they are, they are, they exist because of what the players do. So they can be everywhere. It depends on what the players are doing, basically. Of course, they may be prone to appear in some oceans more often than in yes. others. You know, like fear may be prone to uh, appear in, uh, let's say, in the blue ocean where things are vaster and wider. So. Uh, but also obsession with the blitz scale, always moving fast in the yellow uh, ocean. So, you, you know, you can build, begin to build your own patterns on how it feels uh, for you. So it's not really set in stone. Okay. Uh, and where were the heroes or the players? The players were that Tesla, for example. Or Yeah, so we have the, these five players. So there's the protector, there's the creator, there's the buyer, Maverick and the seeker. So, you know, they are not perfect heroes to say that they are all good, uh, but they are capable of navigating these oceans quite bravely. And I think that's kind of how we want to portray them, that organizations are not always heroic, but they have this ability to do pretty well. They're quite skillful. And if I may add something is that you can see the players as roles and the organizations can change roles depending on, you know, either the ocean they are in or what they are seeking to, to do in, in the ocean, right? So, the, like, basically, you can say that an organization can be many players at the same time, depending on what they are trying to achieve in certain places, right? It's not just Tesla is a maverick in our case, because it's simpler to talk it, to discuss about it this way, but it can also be something else at the same time if we take another uh, context. But does it make sense? I hope, <laughs> I hope it makes sense. Yes, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes, it does. So, so now with that, do, do you see a way for you to use it in the case, in a specific case? You have something in mind? I'm not sure, <laughs> right. um, maybe, but yeah, I also feel that the, um, the oceans are a bit uh, overlapping, which you also have had them overlapping a bit. So yeah, I would like to put yeah some actors or some, um, what were they called, which were they? Um, 
the adjacent spaces, like the spaces that we put in, in the different oceans. But yeah, some of them you can put in several oceans, uh, for example. Um, so yeah, it's hard to, I think. Um, it is the portrayal of fluidity. Mm. It's, it's a matter of not compartmentalizing. Things are fluid, oceans flow. And uh, while there are some uh, benchmarks, some uh, limits, you know, that they don't flow into it one uh, into each other so so much it's like some peripheral sides are are very hard to actually tell that and i think that's the business challenge we wanted to treat the fact that sometimes you might end up in an ocean and you don't know that the rules have changed you don't know that you are changing it's not so uh, i don't know uh, obvious that you have moved from one ocean to the other and if you're not able to spot the change timely I think it uh, it becomes very dangerous for you. You might behave in a manner that, yes, it's detrimental to your business because you're just not aware yet of the rules. Any other questions, thoughts, feelings? Have we drowned? Mm -hmm. I uh, at least like the, I, I like the session a lot, so uh, it was nice to uh, to to work on it and also see all these uh, ideas and tells emerging. Um, so I, yeah, I think it's uh, it's a useful tool, especially for yeah organizations, because I, I quite like the uh, um, yeah the last part actually also where you show the different organizations and their competition. Um, that's not really highlighted yet that often, I think, in the systems innovation um, literature to look a bit, yeah, use those frameworks also for that, um, that use. So I, I like that. And just generally metaphors of oceans and mo monsters. Um, appreciate that. Um, mm, yeah, also a bit curious about, maybe that's me as a person, but curious about the backstory of how you created and where all these monsters and heroes and oceans come exactly from, like how this is was created, but that's maybe for uh, another time. But I, I like the applying this framework. Yeah, we will try to capture these ideas and some of the background stories on the website for the framework, which we are going to launch soon. And uh, we'll share with uh, uh, those that sign in the uh, different uh, social medias and uh, put the link. So is free to follow us and uh, also give some support for for this work it's it's not easy uh, to come up to uh, to create something so we always learn and uh, we always take feedback uh, and listen so we will also reflect on the discussion today and uh, some of the questions and see how we can make it uh, better and more clearer uh, and uh, hopefully more useful and with that maybe we close the session unless somebody else has a question last minute probably not so thanks a lot for joining and uh, we wish you a good evening right on time 601 thank you enjoy so much. thank you mm -hmm. bye thank you thank you thank you bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bye.